good with y'all. Hope y'all have been doing well. Today is the final day of my fall break and I'm out once again hitting trackside to meet up with Riker in the hopes of finally being able to make it all the way up to Lula and Alto to get some good pacing action. Just as the plan was originally, we were supposed to meet up in Swanee. So on this wonderful sunny morning, I'm heading out to the caboose where before we head up north, we're here to capture the trains that are in the area. First off, we have Amtrak 19, which is speeding down south, a train that I usually do not care about at all. But since I was in the area, you know, I might as well just get it. In the absence of ATCS, we really did not know if anything else was coming, but fortunately that block signal came in clutch because it turned red for NS28R that would be coming up north. This is a hotshot intermodal that originates out of Atlanta and will head up all the way to Rutherford, Pennsylvania before coming back down south. We had seen on a post of the day before that there was some derailment that had happened in the Oakwood area. Apparently some center beam had fallen over. So we found the location, went over there, and sure enough, we found the cursed railroad car lying on its side, loaded and with the wheels and axles detached. This train had been purposefully derailed, and I say purposely in quotes because evidently it had run out from whatever industry or spur it had been placed in before. And to prevent it from rolling out into the main line where it can actually hit a real train, it hit the derail so that even though this car is derailed, it's better for it to be derailed here than to be derailed along with an actual train. You may notice up ahead that there is a yellow signal, a signal that clearly indicates that there is something coming. So you would think that we wouldn't try to go too far ahead. We still tried to go all the way up to Gainesville. Oh my God. And in doing so, we missed the train. This was Norfolk Southern 27A, the southbound counterpart to 28R that we saw earlier. Fortunately, it didn't have like anything super special. It's not like we really missed anything catch-wise, but I want videos. I need footage, my guys. To understand the next part of this outing, let's go back to two days ago. I missed all these trains, yada, 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 sad, 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 I missed all the trains. Let's run this graphic back and look back at that second train that I posted. This is Norfolk Southern 44R. This is a grand train that originates somewhere up in the Midwest and terminates at Gainesville, Georgia. So if you look at the units here, there are four units. Three of them are facing north and only one of them is facing south, that second unit. Ideally, that second unit would be leading the southbound train out of Gainesville, right? Unfortunately, there was just a slight problem. The horn did not work. Huh? What do you mean by that? I can't say anything more than that. The horn literally did not work. The crew got on there, tried blowing the horn, and it was not working. So the SD-70 Ace that is third out was actually put ahead to lead this train. Now, Reichter and I, we did not know that this train was even going to be running. All we heard was that as soon as we got by Gainesville, we heard the scanner go off and the crew talking about how there were maintainers on top of the locomotive. 
And what would you know, when we got to the station, we got by the locomotives to see the SD-70 Ace long hood forward and two maintainers sitting on top of placing the horn. This is one of the coolest things I've seen. Like literally when we got there, one of the maintainers was just casually holding a K5LA horn in his hands. And the back cap of one of the bells had dropped, a back cap that I intended to steal, <clears throat> I mean return to the appropriate Norfolk Southern authorities, of course. Further evidence of Saturday's activities is off in the distance, where that parked train on the left is actually led by the same unit that led P72 on the Saturday that the Nine Forks let me start trip. The grain train here, 45R, had completed all of its work and was not just waiting for the signal maintainers to complete their work. Gainesville is colloquially known as the chicken capital of the south or something like that, so there's frequent grain activity that occurs in this area. Additionally, the Amtrak station is here, which is where these locomotives are parked next to, and there is an airport nearby, which constantly reminds you of its presence with airplanes going in and out of the area. We could see the maintainers continue their work on the horn of that second locomotive. While the K5 LLA on the lead locomotive said it's working just fine. While the NS lines were showing some sign of activity, the CSX lines behind us also were. The CSX line here is the Gainesville Midland. This is a very quiet line in terms of traffic. You really only see like very short trains. And to be honest, I've only ever seen CSX locomotives here twice. But today at the mill that goes by the CSX tracks, we can actually see the track mobile for the mill working. This is a little vehicle that is just used for shunting cars in and out of the mill, whether it be loaded or unloaded. And honestly, I find this thing very cool. Like look at this tiny yellow box that's actually able to pull a few cars. As the track mobile returns back to the mill over there, the Norfolk Southern crew quickly gets indication and soon departs the station. I must admit y'all, I low key hold the crew here. I was so focused on making sure that my video went out well that I didn't even notice that the engineer waved at me. Bro. Today is Labor Day. These train crews are working on Labor Day and this man had the kindness to even just wave at me bro and I didn't even notice. Call me a trash individual however you want. If that engineer ever sees this video, my bad big bro. As all the big modern six axle power goes off into the distance, you can now look at that solo unit that's sitting right here. An EMD GPCC that was built in August of 1991. Yes, this thing is 32 years old and still running on the river. Sure, this thing has definitely seen past its prime days and now is just running locals, but it is still very cool to see locomotives still old that are running out on the high iron, still pulling trains for people like me to film in it.
With the Grand Train gone, we can now look at a more unique power set that is very important to the Gainesville industry here. Here, we can see the Cargill units that are here. Cargill is the company that processes all the NS grain trains that come into Gainesville, and because they process these trains, they have their own locomotives that they use to take all the NS cars, split them up, and shunt them in so that the grain cars can get unloaded. The first cargo locomotive that we have here is a SD20, you don't really see too many of those, with evidence of the treatment that they give this engine. I've only seen this engine running a few times, and even from the few times that I've seen it, I can tell that they do not care about these engines. Go on, shut it out. And when they're switching, it appears that they just slowed these things into not shape. Because whenever they're reversing with a load of cars behind them, just a tall pillar of smoke just comes out of the smokestack. And you can see the evidence of all of that exhaust littered on the engine hood. Behind the SD20, we have this GP9, another locomotive that you don't see too often, which just supplies additional horsepower for the trains when they're switching. It's cool seeing standard cabs like these, especially in this unique neon green paint scheme, because these are not the standard anymore, now it's just all wide cabs. Well anyways, once Ragdor and I were done looking at these locomotives, we went by the CSX mill just to get some footage. We can see the track mobile back over there with the hoppers that it was moving around, and we can also just get a closer look at the operations that's back here. There are many trucks that go in and out of this area, which is evidenced by how bumpy these roads were. These roads were in such horrible condition, bro. And look, here's one of the culprits right now, murdering the roads, but still having a job to and this my friends would be the last clip that i filmed today now you may be wondering did i not say that we were gonna go up to lula and alto yes that was the plan however after we were at gainesville roger and i decided to make a stop at a chick-fil-a nearby to get some lunch before we made the journey up right and we were chilling you know i had my fries and chicken he had whatever he had ordered and we were chilling we were all good he had put the recliner seat back in the front and somehow this man this man who has angel hair spaghetti arms and the strength of five ants he pulled on the back of the seat the headrest y'all i cannot make this up he literally broke the headrest bro and it wasn't like just one piece had fallen out or something there was a fracture in the back of the seat I kid you not when I say I sat in this parking lot for, I believe, 40 minutes trying to fix this. And ultimately, I just came to the conclusion, this thing is broke. It's not going to get fixed. And let me remind you that I was using my mother's car oh for this God. trip. No! So honestly, I was thinking I was dead, to tell you the truth. I, I thought this was going to be the last time you was going to see me. This would be my last video. I wasn't going to keep going up with the car broke like this and then have my mom come back to see the car. So we decided to just head back. I let her know and she was actually chill. She just wanted to make sure I was all right. But um, yeah, our trip ended right there. And apparently we missed a train while this was happening. So uh, yeah, insult to injury there. And unfortunately, this was my last day of break. So with this tragic conclusion to the day, the weekend also came to a rather tragic end, real fanning wise. And thus, I made my trip back to Atlanta, back to college, where I will be in the books or by the rails filming whatever comes by. The city's ridiculous when it comes to train traffic. Will we ever make it up to Lula and Alto? Who knows? Guess we'll see in the future. But until then, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And as always, God bless. I'll see you soon. Out on the high iron.